Ferrum is a company that doesn't seem to like releasing standard products, instead quite often going the extra mile with design aspects and features that other manufacturers might either feel aren't worth the R&D effort or are too complicated to implement. And the Wandler is no exception. This packs a ton of unique features into the same compact form factor as the OR headphone amp and Hypsos power supply, with some very impressive performance to boot. So let's dive in. I'm Golden Sound, and you're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com. I'll start by saying that the Wanda is an expensive deck. It is $2,800, and that's going to be a lot more than many people are comfortable spending, and that's fine. Products at these higher price points are not five times better than those costing five times less, but there are quite a lot of people who are happy to pay substantially more for diminishing, but still meaningful returns. Value versus dollar spent and how much it's worth it to spend is entirely subjective. That's up to you, your circumstances, your preferences, and your priorities. But at any given price point, the performance versus other products, that can be a little bit more definitive. And so we're not here to tell you how much you should be spending. We're here to help you decide what the best product to get at the amount that you want to spend is. As to why this is so expensive, we're gonna start out by having a look at the internals and some measurements of the Wandler. Now, there's a lot of unique tech aspects to this, so this is gonna be a bit of a deep dive, and if you are just here for sound quality, you can skip to this timestamp to go straight there. But for those who are interested in a little bit of a peek under the hood, keep watching. Additionally important to note is that shortly after the release of this video, there should be a version 1.2 software coming out for the Wandler, and all subjective and objective evaluation in this video is done on firmware 1.2. I did get sent this unit early and I coordinated with Ferrum to improve a couple things over version 1.1, which results in both better sound and better measured performance in a few areas, so I would recommend updating to 1.2 once it's available. Internally, the first thing that might catch your attention is this daughter board near the center. Now, the Wandler does not use any off-the-shelf components like USB receivers, an XMOS chip for example, nor any off-the-shelf SPDIF, AS receivers, nothing to control the display, because everything, and I mean everything, is done on this module which Ferrum is calling Sursa. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but this effectively acts as an all-in-one brain for the device. It handles all control and switching logic, all digital inputs, it feeds the DAC itself, it controls the display, and it puts that extra processing power to good use by providing much higher quality oversampling or reconstruction filters than what ESS has internally. And those were developed in conjunction with the man behind HQ Player, so we'll talk more about that in a sec because that, in my view, is one of the coolest features of this product. You can see the power supply section on the left hand side here, and the analog and digital sections of the one that actually have their own independent power supply, so that's nice, isolated from each other of course. And you'll also be able to use either the 24 volt power supply that the Wanda comes with, or the Hypsos power supply, which then enables you to use this 4 pin port so that the Hypsos can sense and correct the voltage on the PCB of the Wanda itself. The DAC itself is an ESS9038, and some people would be inclined to say, okay, well, hang on. For a product this expensive, shouldn't we be getting two chips, not just one? But the reason that you would go for two DAC chips rather than just one is to reduce crosstalk because you can physically separate the left and right channels more. But the Wandler's crosstalk remains under minus 140 dB at all times, so clearly there's no issue with that here. Also nice to see that the clock is in extremely close physical proximity to the deck, which is good because for ideal clock signal integrity, you want as short a trace path as possible between the clock and the deck. Just above the DAC chip to the upper left and right is the IV or current to voltage conversion stage. This part is actually something that I had the chance to talk to the lead engineer behind the Wandler about at Munich this year, and he was particularly proud of this specific aspect of the device, because Ferrum didn't just design an IV stage that measured well and did that because they said that actually they were able to fairly easily come up with a few different design options that all measured well, but not all of them sounded great. And so they went through several different design revisions and revamps before they settled on this one as one that measured excellently and sounded great. So always nice to see that companies are validating products with both listening tests and measurements, not just one or the other. Moving up to the analog output stage, you can see some relays here, and that's because the user can choose whether they would like to have these components in the signal path. These are laser trimmed resistor attenuator chips for analog volume control. The Wandlet allows you to choose whether you'd like to do volume control as most DACs do by doing it in the digital domain. So the Sursa module will attenuate the digital information and then feed that to the DAC. 
or have the DAC output at full scale and then attenuate after in the analog domain using these two chips. You can also run it in bypass mode, which means there's no volume control whatsoever, but it does output up to 10 volts in that mode versus the normal four volt line level. So that might be too hot for some amplifiers. If you want to run it with four volt line level, set the volume control to 92. As to which of the volume control methods is better, quite frankly, they all performed excellently. You're gonna lose a little bit of performance compared to just running it in bypass because you are attenuating the signal, but if it's too loud, it's too loud. You're gonna attenuate somewhere, even if it's in your headphone amp. These three screenshots show the results of getting four volt output through an OR and Wandla using all three volume control options. There's a few components up here which are in fact an analog input stage because this is not just a DAC, it is a preamp as well. You can connect an analog RCA input and have it remain in analog with analog volume control the entire way through. So if you're using the Wandler as your DAC but you've also got a vinyl setup, you can connect that vinyl setup to the Wandler and have this be your preamp. This controls everything just with one remote. The signal received at these inputs is also immediately converted to balanced and then remains balanced the rest of the way through the device for best performance. On the note of performance, if you'd like to see full detailed measurements of the Wandla, including measurements with all three volume control methods, then head over to the audio files post, which is linked in the description. But the short summary is that you get just under 120 dB total harmonic distortion plus noise with quite a nice second order dominated profile too. Practically perfect jitter performance, crosstalk under minus 140 dB, Distortion that remains constant versus output level and a very minor change versus frequency, actually getting lower at high frequencies, which is the opposite of what you usually see. No switching noise visible under one megahertz and something that most DACs don't have, an oversampling filter that actually adheres to Nyquist theory. For an in-depth explanation as to what Nyquist theory is, head over to the glossary of audio measurements and design terms on the audio files, again, linked in the description. A quick explanation though, is that Nyquist theorem states, in order to accurately reconstruct the original analog waveform from sampled PCM data, you have to have a filter that fully attenuates and removes everything above half the sampling rate. For most music, that's 22.05 kilohertz, but you don't also wanna be messing with stuff in the audible band. So it needs to fully attenuate by 22.05 kilohertz but not attenuate anything under 20 kilohertz. Problem being, the vast majority of DACs on the market can't and don't do this. They actually don't have the required processing power. They have filters including all of the stock filters on ESS chips and AKM chips that either don't roll off and attenuate by half the sampling rate, meaning they don't adhere to Nyquist theory, or if they do, they roll off stuff in the audible band. So there's only a handful of DACs on the market that have actually implemented the required processing power to have a filter that is properly transparent, and this is one of them. The external build is similar to the previous Ferrum products or and Hypsos, with the same matte black chassis accented by the Core 10 or weathering steel square. For those who have an Ore and Hypsos, you can power both the Ore and the Wandler from a single Hypsos unit if you purchase the splitter, which Ferrum has released alongside the Wandler. At the back of the device, I.O. is a bit more plentiful than what you'd see on most typical DACs, with all the usual digital inputs, AES, I2S, SPDIF, and USB, which is done over USB-C, not USB-B, and also an HDMI ARC input, which I imagine many people will be happy to see, as well as the aforementioned analog inputs. What differentiates the Wandler's build from the other Ferrum products, though, is the display. It's significantly larger than the Hypsos, and it's a touchscreen, allowing you to control all of the features of the Wandler with what I have to say is an exceptionally responsive and intuitive UI. In my review of the Ferrum Ore, I praise the Hypsos power supply for the fact that a power supply has a better UI than some DAX do, and the Wandler is honestly just another step up. Which, given how many features the Wandler has, having a fluid and intuitive UI to change inputs, change filters, configure input gain and trim, and all the other myriad of things that can be customized, is both kind of necessary and very well executed. I've even noticed a couple undocumented features, like the fact that the sample rate and bit depth indicator on the front, that actually displays the true bit depth of what is being played, not just the format. So if you're playing a 24-bit file, but it's actually only using 20 bits, it will show 20 bit. I've even found a couple instances where a 24-bit file turned out to just be a 16-bit file in disguise. So many features in such a compact and well-polished package, but how does it sound? I started by comparing the Wandler to the Gustard X18, an objectively very well measuring DAC, also using the 903A chip, and the Eversolo DAC Z8, which at the moment is my favorite DAC under $1,000. 
Both of these are very nice sounding DACs and they both measure very well in most respects as well, but when it comes to the resulting sound, the Wandler was a clear winner. The most obvious difference to me was between the Wandler and the Gustard X18, because the Wandler just outright lacked the sterile, cold sounding presentation that the X18, among many other ESS DACs, can often present. The Eversolo DAC Z8 does a better job of this, which is one of the reasons that I like it. It's much less artificial sounding, but the Wandler was the closest to a true, genuine neutral sound signature, and overall, the most realistic sounding. Detail retrieval itself, though, is kind of on par between all three devices because I found that most ESS DACs, properly implemented ones anyway, are kind of at a limit in terms of how much they are resolving. They're all very similar in that regard. And now it's not a case of which is the more detailed DAC, it's a case of which DAC can offer that same exceptional level of detail with the fewest compromises in other areas. Perhaps this advantage for the Wandler, even over other DACs based on the same DAC chip, is in large part thanks to the work done on that IV stage, but whatever it is, the end result is the Wandler is the most genuinely neutral and lifelike sounding ESS DAC in particular that I have heard. And it doesn't give anything up in terms of resolving capability in order to do that. And this is just comparing with the stock ESS linear phase filter, so I'm comparing the hardware like for like. If you go with the HQ filters, things improve even more. These filters were designed in conjunction with Jussi Larco, who is the developer of the high performance upsampling tool HQ Player, and both of these filters fully adhere to Nyquist theorem in a theoretically transparent manner, meaning as well as fully attenuating by half the sample rate, they also do not attenuate anything under 20 kHz, something which none of the stock ESS filters, or even AKM filters for that matter, manage to achieve. The HQ filters don't provide any improvement in detail retrieval, nor to my ear do they really change perceived tonality at all. What they improve is spatial presentation. When you swap from the ESS linear phase filter to the HQ appetizing filter, immediately soundstage expands. Complicated mixes sound more clearly separated and overall congestion just gets reduced. It makes things sound a bit more effortless. It's not just about making things sound area. It actually improves spatial placement. It makes things sound more tangible in a way. And overall, that was a big improvement for my personal just immersion in the music that I was listening to. And it really makes me wish that more DACs would include proper reconstruction filters. When it comes to which of the two volume control methods, analog or digital, was the better option, quite frankly, they both sounded excellent, they both measured excellent, and for the most part, they sounded incredibly similar to me. It was only at really low volumes where differences started to become a little bit apparent, but even then, it was very minor. Basically, with analog volume control, the lower down you go, you lose a little bit of incisiveness. It sounds a little bit softer. Not by much, just a touch but spatial presentation remains exactly the same. Whereas with digital volume control, you keep the same level of incisiveness the whole way down. It doesn't lose any sense of attack, but things lost a little bit of tangibility in terms of how they were placed in front of you. With tracks like Perimeter by Gidge, some elements would usually be directly between my speakers with others way off in the distance, but when using the digital volume control at really low levels, it did seem to kind of collapse those together a little bit. Everything was a bit flatter. Overall, I slightly prefer the analog volume control, but as said, it didn't really matter unless you were really turning it down a lot, and I mostly just kept this in bypass and controlled the volume on my headphone amp anyway. The Wandler is an incredibly impressive product, and it was not at all out of place when compared to my personal favorite DAC, the $5,600 Holomay KTE. The May wins out on realism of instrument timbre and a little bit of clarity of separation. It still just edges things out there, but in outright soundstage size, which that's something R2R DACs are known for, the Wandler was happily trading blows with the May and resolution was again pretty much on par. So this was not far behind and it's a lot cheaper and a lot smaller. Lastly, you might be wondering whether the Hypsos power supply is a worthwhile upgrade for the Wandler. And to that, I would say most likely no. Quite frankly, I didn't find that there was much of an improvement. The only thing that I maybe could say is that there's a slight reduction in sharpness with the Wandler when you use it with the Hypsos, but it's so subtle that I'm honestly just not comfortable saying it wasn't just placebo. And even if it is there, it's so much more subtle than the difference heard on the OR headphone amp when using that with the Hypsos over the stock power supply instead, which I guess makes sense. The OR is a headphone amp and it's not class A. It's gonna be having various different dynamic power requirements, whereas the Wandler, it's just gonna remain constant. So the only thing the power supply needs to do is be low noise but the Wandler has excellent filtering and regulation and everything internally anyway, so it just doesn't matter much. 
If you already have an Aura and Hypsos, then it's probably worth getting the Splitter so that you can run the Wandler and the Aura off the single Hypsos unit. But if you are just getting the Wandler, I would not worry about getting the Hypsos just for this. It's not really worth it, and that money would be better put towards a headphone upgrade or something instead. The Wandler is without a doubt the best sounding DAC I have heard under $3,000 and in anything even close to this compact of form factor. I've enjoyed it so much that I'm honestly tempted to say this might just be my favorite Delta Simwood deck I've heard, period. The only other two coming in close being the Cord Dave and M Scaler combo and the Brocasti M1 SE. I'd love in future to put this up against the Weiss DAC 501 or 502 because that's also a high-end ESS based DAC, it's getting on to $10,000. But it's interesting because, like the Wanda, rather than relying on the ESS processing, it actually does a lot of the digital processing off-chip proprietary and bypasses a lot of the ESS chip functions. So that'd be quite an interesting and even comparison to make. At $2,800, the Wandler is an excellent choice. Not only subjectively, but also objectively in all the usual areas, like Synad and Crosstalk, but also in the areas that many others just ignore, like ultrasonic noise or reconstruction filter performance. And to have this level of quality, this number of features in this compact form factor is exceptionally impressive. I hope you found that video interesting and useful, and if you did, or if you've got any questions about this, any other gear, music, or anything audio related at all, head over to the headphones.com Discord server, or the headphones.com forum, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavour to help. Until next time, thanks for watching.